Ever wondered what it would be like to live in a perfect world? Well, the Beatitudes might just be the blueprint for such a world. These are principles delivered by Jesus during the Sermon on the Mount, a pivotal moment in the Christian narrative where Jesus outlines the ideal traits and behaviors of his followers. Take a moment and picture this. You're in the middle of your regular day at work. Amidst the hustle and bustle, there's one colleague who stands out. They face hardships, yes, but they never let these struggles steal their hope or humility. They remain resilient, optimistic and grounded. That's the essence of the first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, being poor in spirit isn't about material poverty. It's about humility, hope and spiritual richness. A life lived in humility, despite the odds, reflects the essence of being poor in spirit. In a world filled with conflicts and chaos, how can we truly be peacemakers or pure in heart? The Beatitudes, as told by Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount, provides us with a guide. Let us delve into the Beatitude that speaks of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. In today's world, this might seem like a tall order, yet there are those who rise to the occasion, acting as modern-day peacemakers. Picture a community leader, tirelessly working to bridge differences, to quell the fires of conflict, and to sow the seeds of harmony in their neighborhood. This individual, through their actions, embodies the essence of this beatitude. They are the peacemakers, the children of God, working to bring about tranquility amid turmoil. Now let's consider the beatitude that addresses purity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. In a world where deception can often be the easier path, maintaining a pure heart can be a challenge. However, envision a scenario where someone chooses to uphold honesty, even when it's inconvenient. They remain true to their principles, refusing to compromise their integrity. This person, through their unwavering commitment to truth, exemplifies the purity of heart that this beatitude celebrates. They are the ones who, through their honesty, get a glimpse of the divine. These beatitudes, though ancient, resonate deeply with our contemporary experiences. They remind us that even amid chaos and conflict, opportunities for purity and peace abound. It's a matter of making the choice to be a peacemaker, to remain pure in heart, to take the road less traveled. These modern exemplars show us that purity and peace, though challenging, are not unattainable virtues. They are within reach for each of us, fostering a connection to the divine and carving a path towards a more harmonious world. In a world where self-interest often takes precedence, what does it mean to be meek or merciful? Being meek isn't about weakness, but rather about exhibiting strength with restraint. Imagine a CEO who, instead of lashing out at a struggling employee, offers guidance and support. In doing so, they embody the essence of blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Now let's consider mercy. Picture a man who, after being wronged, chooses to forgive rather than seek revenge. In this act of forgiveness, he personifies the words, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. These beatitudes aren't just about individual actions, but about creating a collective consciousness. They encourage us to foster a society rooted in understanding and compassion, where power is exercised with humility and forgiveness is extended freely. In practicing meekness and mercy, we can usher in a world that mirrors the kingdom of heaven. How can the teachings of the Beatitudes guide us in our daily lives, you may ask? The Beatitudes, spoken by Jesus during the Sermon on the Mount, are essentially eight blessings that serve as a moral compass, even in the 21st century. Their profound wisdom is as relevant today as it was over 2,000 years ago. Imagine a world where we mourn with those who mourn, comfort those who are in pain, and strive to make peace instead of war. Envision a society where the poor in spirit, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, are not overlooked, but rather uplifted. The Beatitudes teach us to be merciful, pure in heart, and peacemakers. They encourage us to stand strong in the face of persecution for the sake of righteousness. Let these teachings guide our actions, our words, and our hearts. The Beatitudes, though ancient, hold timeless wisdom. In embracing these teachings, we can cultivate a world that is closer to the kingdom of heaven. As we conclude, let's take a moment to pray and commit to living the Beatitudes. Join me now in this moment of reflection and dedication. Dear Father, we thank you for the wisdom of the Beatitudes. 
we ask for your guidance as we strive to live these teachings in our daily lives. Help us to mourn with those who mourn, to comfort those in pain, and to make peace where there is discord. Give us the strength to stand with the poor in spirit, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, and to show mercy. Purify our hearts, Lord, and help us to be peacemakers in a world that often chooses conflict. And when we face persecution for the sake of righteousness, grant us the courage to stand firm. We commit ourselves to embody the teachings of the Beatitudes, not just in our words, but in our actions and in our hearts. Help us to reflect your kingdom here on earth, as we strive to live a life that is pleasing to you. May we all strive to live the Beatitudes in our daily lives. Amen. As the prayer comes to a close, let's take this moment to reflect on the profound wisdom of these teachings. And as we move forward, let these truths guide us in our daily lives, shaping our actions, our words and our hearts. Let's strive to create a world that reflects the Kingdom of Heaven. Remember, the Beatitudes are not just ancient teachings, but timeless wisdom for us all. And with this prayer, we end our journey through the Beatitudes. But remember, it's not the end, but rather the beginning of a life lived in the light of these blessings.